Welcome pool lovers from around the world. This is the 23rd annual Derby City Classic just outside of Louisville. Pool fans, hundreds of them, and players gather here each January to compete in straight pool. Banks, one pocket, nine ball, but this is invitational only. 16 of the greatest players on the planet all battling out on this diamond 10-foot table. It's the Bigfoot 10 ball challenge and we are in round one it is time to meet the players and find out who is going to be moving on to the elite eight first up he's a 2007 world nine ball runner-up ohio nine ball champion and the 2018 diamond bigfoot champion he's sponsored by predator bogey's pool bar in houston and havoc productions from Zamba City, Philippines, the Superman, Roberto Gomez. <laughs> and his opponent is a 2012 Derby City Banks champion, also a Super Billiards Expo 10 ball champion, and the 2021 NBL 10 ball champion. Sponsored by Predator and Enviro Assessments from Toronto, Canada. Give it up for Mr. Smooth, John Mora. They're lagging for their break. Our referee is Dwayne Payne and sending it up to the guys in the AccuStats booth. Hello and welcome, everybody. We're coming to you from high atop the AccuStats arena here at the Bigfoot Challenge. World-class 10 ball is happening, and Jeremy Jones and Mark Wilson are delighted that you could join us. Jeremy, tell us something about this table. Well, uh, Roberto Gomez, as you heard, 2018 champion here on the 10-footer. A little surprised there, I thought, at that moment. But Roberto in the last few years has shown his class. And we talked about John Moore and what amazing feat he's, he's accomplished and, and starting to get wins uh, opposite-handed. He made a change a few years ago and maybe the most incredible thing in our sport in a long time um, to be able to play at the speed he played. Uh, it's just a shadow. It's becoming just a shadow behind what he played, uh, you know, right-handed his entire life. And, uh, you know, look for a close match. I think probably both guys settle in a little bit. I watched a Roberto a little bit of late. I kind of felt like <clears throat> maybe he wasn't hitting the ball as well as, as he has been last year or the year before here to start off 2022. But it doesn't take him long, um, and like most of these guys, to figure it out. So I expect a good match. Roberto's won the lag. This is a race to 11. It's 10 ball. It's not call shot. The two and the three do not have to be racked on the corners. There is no compliance rule for the break. No jump cues. Yeah, and I would say, you know, both these guys, for a period of time, just because there were so many guys that got the, the 10 ball break down in a, in a manner, you could say that, I think Roberto took him a little longer, like like I commented about some of the Euros. Uh, took Alvin a little longer to figure the 10 ball break out. Niels, kind of feel like it's the same with John as well. Sometimes John can over hit him a little bit. So we'll see how that works out for the break shot. 21.36 on his first break. Yeah, and you know, the, the rack really doesn't lie. I know it sometimes seems coincidental with kisses and whatnot, but when you're getting them clusters, uh, probably just not getting that connection on the rack like you'd like. Because we've seen, you know, after day one, a lot of, not not a whole lot of clusters, right? Overall, the ball's been breaking really nice. Right. We're using the Outsville template here. Watch out for the kiss. He's got a, oh, he barely beat it. Super nice shot. That was a committed stroke that beat that kiss. And look at that. <laughs> Perfect speed. Lodges it right up on the seven there, three cushions. Pretty shot to watch executed. Just like Jeremy said, it was very narrow, missing the kiss. And he's got to put a lot of heavy spin here. Now, whoever gets that first shot at the one, is he not even shooting at this? Is he trying to move the three? No, I think he's kicking. Oh, between. Oh. And that, you know, may be a, a, a pretty good sign of what I was talking about before. I know that was tight, right? Mm -hmm. But for a top player to sh be shooting between balls, just trying to gain the path of the cue ball in to get behind on a kick shot and catch the ball going in. I know there was some side spin, but that tells you that timing's off a little bit maybe. <clears throat> yeah, if it was that tight, 
where you might miss hit it. He could have kicked the side rail. Yeah, he had options, right? So he probably wouldn't threaten that usually. <clears throat> now, I might size up. Looks like John thinks the four goes by the six, which I think it does. But really, to move the cue ball back to the five, you got to get pretty precise. <laughs> John goes right-handed here where he's really nimble. Yeah, I thought he might try and bump the four a little bit right here. If he could just roll and bump it, take the little cut, like a thin cut on the three, I think that works. He goes into this with some speed, Mark. This could be dangerous. I think he's just perfect. Maybe a light stun, hit the four real full. Nice shot. That was. Yeah, well-crafted and uh, well-executed, too. You go into those clusters and you, and you think, well, I can't get possibly trapped here. But somehow the cue ball gets over the top of the 10 or something weird happens. And then it's just murder to get out. But he negotiated that quite well. Yeah, well, one thing I liked is he didn't go into them too firm. You know, when the balls are away from the rail, doesn't take a whole lot to, to open a couple balls, two or three balls, really. It's just about a maybe a 10-inch bump speed, kind of like you're bumping them 10 inches maybe or something like that. And when the balls start to get on the side rail, it's different because, you know, you have double kisses that will keep the ball locked up and stuff. So generally you have to open the ball a little firmer when they're on the rail. Still a lot of work here, though, right, Mark? Oh, yeah. He's got to go. Well, he's got to get back on the seven, which does go, but you do need to get all the way to the end of the table to get it. Yeah, this is going to be a touchy shot just because, you know, the eight and ten – Make it a little harder to play from above the six, which is really where you'd want to be. Um, I think now he can come two rails and get below the six, maybe. Side rail, side rail, falling down to the bottom rail. Right. He could pull the ball as well in between the 10-6, but that requires a little more touch. This looks just pretty natural, maybe a tip of right English. Yeah, it looks perfect. It's amazing just how nimble he even looks left-handed these days compared to when he first started coming out here playing left-handed. He, he always looked terribly awkward. Now he's starting to get really uh, limbered up that way. Yeah. Most people wouldn't know that he's naturally a right-hander. Yeah, and it's, you know, we saw that first shot right-hander. He, he took it on righty because of the reach, and that makes total sense normally. Really only changes for a real soft spin shot or when he's on the rail and he has to elevate the cue. That's normally when he'll go back to right-handed. Well, and, and, of course, breaking. Breaking, yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> that always struck me as odd. Okay, he's gotten a little thin, but very nice shot. Now, the thing is, I don't know if he can get in there and make the seven with right English to kill the cue ball. So he may have to work this rock still with some left around the tent. This is a little tight, Mark. Because, you know, right English, you have to get a little thinner on it, right? Yeah, he's uh, queuing up with the right English. Yeah, so he, he feels like he can kill it. Watch out, side pocket. Oh, he overcut it as well. No, he played it that way. Cause look yeah, at yeah, speed. for sure, 100%. Yeah. He did overcut it, but I'm just saying he, we know he was trying to go two cushions. No, I think he did on purpose overcut it. But I was just saying I didn't know if he could get in there, let alone he overcut the ball and still got in there to, to cut it in. So, To me, I've never seen another player ever play high-level pro pool, even winning an event here right-handed, and then later return as a left-hander and be effective. Never, well, I've never even seen anyone else try it, to be honest with you. Yeah, I played – you know, I didn't know the story exactly, but I played Cecil Tugwell when I was young. Yeah. And he was a he was a player that had to switch hands. Uh, and that, that is uh, that is the other one that I would think of. Yeah, uh, that, that, that played at a top it. level switching hands, yeah. right? He, well, he got his arm broke. Right. I knew I knew it was a <laughs> it was, it was a, a pretty story. It was a forced thing, but yeah. but uh, but nevertheless, he was a. I played him in. I was playing him in Olathe, Kansas, and a couple of friends of mine, we played about 10 hours or so. We played several times, and and uh, 
a friend of mine came up to me and said that you think you're playing pretty good, huh? I was like, yeah, I'm like a game winner or something like that. And he said, well, the guy's playing the opposite handed. How do you like that? Mm. <laughs> I was like, really? <laughs> All right, John Mora with a, of course, 10 footer. You got to pay attention, but pretty routine. Golly. 1 0 Mora. Mr. Mr. Smooth. Smooth. Yep. First. <laughs> John, a former Banks champion here in 2012. I think he, if I remember right, I was here. He beat SVB in the finals. And you think SVB, and you know, of course he has the most fans, but John had really put it together that week, and I remember the final. Everybody was really kind of pulling for John, even as great and as much as they love Shane. Mm hmm. Well, I think, you know, everybody pulls for someone that's never won. NBA. Yeah, the underdog yeah, role, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm a big sucker for that, that's for sure. And then you get your picture on the banner for life or eternity. Or pretty cool. So John wins on Roberto's break early. Roberto, I wouldn't say hit the break too terribly bad. Just didn't work out, but then that swerve shot caught him. John made a real nice out with ball in hand. Did. To me, it's amazing. Uh, these guys almost never get to play on a 10 foot table, yet their game holds together. You don't really, you know, you break down a lesser player for sure. Yeah, and you know, you just jump a le one level down and you'll see a big difference when they get to the 10 footer, I think. Uh, but these guys, the way they, you know, their fundamentals, their practice, their minds. You know, after they get a little settled, it's really usually okay. Well, there's the John Moore right-handed break. Yeah, kind of a flat cue ball, right? You know, maybe not how he wanted to hit him. We'll see. 21-14 on the radar. Yeah, and it's weird. Like right there, you could tell there was a real flush hit on the one. The cue ball drew back uh, kind of like on the line he was on breaking. It's just something about that connection. It's not really about the speed as much, I don't think. And Roberto's got a great starter with pretty much, besides the one, everything in the middle of the table-ish. So shouldn't, shouldn't really have a whole lot of cue ball movement here, Mark, for the first several shots. Now, Roberto's kind of a funny guy. He's a right-handed player, but when he uses the bridge, he goes left-handed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the oddest thing, and you pointed it out to me. I've never seen it before. But. I've seen it with uh, several players, actually. Was on the road with a guy that, that played like that. He also never made a closed bridge. I knew the guy like 15 years. Never mm -hmm. seen him make, and he was a good player, and he never made a closed bridge. All right, gonna follow here with a little inside. And did you see just a hair off with his timing there? Just not a whole lot, but. Oh yeah, he definitely flinched upward, and yeah. and he definitely hit the wrong side of the pocket anyway. You know, so that we know. When I I ain't totally convinced when when the stick hit the cue ball that he was convinced he made it you know he kind of right. kind of came up off of it like he was a little alarmed and i just got a chance to do a little commentary and watch a few matches of roberto here early in 2022 and it just seemed like you know just a little bit here and there he was off and now with a little bit of an odd shot because the five does go on the side but it's tight and he's got an odd to hold the ball can't really draw a cross with the nine in the side pocket being there. And it's not the type of shot. He doesn't get to the right side real quickly, Mark. You know what I mean? With a high ball. So mm -hmm. stunning forward to get on the side is a, kind of an odd stroke. Easy to hit this thick into the bottom rail. And not to mention he's bridging over the six, which doesn't aid accuracy. He actually overcut it a bit using the. He did good, though. Nice speed to allow the ball to trickle on in when he didn't hit the pocket pure. Yeah, it's just an odd shot, though. You're elevated, but you're trying to lightly stun forward. You know what I mean? That's yeah. just an odd combination. And now he's in perfect. Uh, he's got to pay attention to his half a pocket going forward with the cue ball. And I think you're seeing Roberto take a little more time here. 
in this first rack just because he's maybe not so settled. Draw stroke. And that's pretty decent short, right? Mm-hmm. But a pretty nice stroke because that was not effective draw. That was that stun draw to get this angle. So, yeah, it, d it didn't come out perfect, but uh, you can see he's definitely thinking right. And now. This would be a big bolster for his confidence if he gets this down. You this know, the, out. the nine's cutting him off from coming two rails backwards how he wants. He can still do it and take a little longer shot, which I kind of like myself versus going forward two rails. Just go past the nine, barely. Come back to the head. Oh, he caught the nine. Ooh. Whew. So you can see right mm -hmm. there, though, the tip came up again. Like a good, at least a tip's worth. That's how that ball reacts like that. Boy, this is a Herculean effort now. One, you, well, maybe you can just go with straight top spin. Looks like he's skewing down. That makes that yeah. shot play tougher. He does that a lot, though, and he'll come up with the tip, though. So unless he's spinning it with outside, it'll look like he's – you see how he still hit a high ball and he, even though? Yeah, he was up. He was up at the end of that shot in a hurry. Pretty um, on-angle cross-side bank here, shot that we fully expect more to take on. Doesn't mean that he's going to make it. just means that it's worth playing. Yeah, that's a little funny for position. Just, I mean, you'd like to just draw it straight back and take the cut. I mean, take the cut in the corner, but just like a light draw. Otherwise, I'm not sure where you go with the cue ball. Oh, he let her rip a little bit. So he's going to have to come with another tough one. Nice shot, though. Yeah, yeah, super nice. Got another big shot in front of him. Similar shot he was practicing before the match started, coming across one rail. Get that good. <laughs> yeah. Touched nothing except the inside of the pocket. I think day one that ball drops. So, you know, I mean, it's yeah, I didn't expect it. Even when it hit and it kind of bobbled a hair, I thought it was still going to fall. It's really hard to ever not pull for John Moore, given his circumstance of coming back. You know, it's like I'm not necessarily against anybody, but I just kind of like to see somebody that has to fight that type of adversity and will do so with work ethic and discipline to succeed. I have to say something to that one. Oh, boy. It's all right as long as he doesn't get to the rail. Hello, side pocket. <laughs> doesn't yeah. do anything for your confidence when you're that far off, though. Yeah, it was a touchy shot coming at deep out of that pocket, though, with the nine. So I, I don't think he's too upset. And now one to one. And John, he's speaking of John, of course, just like Roberto. He's a great guy, you know. Mm-hmm. Never really has anything harsh to say to anyone. Great competitor. Everybody that acts like that, that respects the sport and actually puts the sport above the individual, is like part of my family. You yeah. know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I, I just pull for all of them. That's, that's just happening. And that gives you an average of how each player is doing. But at the end of the day, it's only the score that matters. It's one to one, and Gomez will have the break. Now, John Morrow's made an equipment change here in the last few months and had some results with it. So we'll see how that carries on for him. He seems pretty excited with his new equipment. Yeah, and, you know, just watch through the through the week or the next few days of this 10-footer. And, you know, the miles per hour will be similar with a lot of guys. and But big differences on the layouts and balls made. Yeah, so what's what is the difference, Mark? Yeah, I think it's the square hit. How the square yeah, they hit it. The follow through to me seems to be one constant thing with the best breakers. The guys that get to the middle of the table with the cue seem to have maybe a little more room for error is the best way to say it. I don't know. But these balls are kind of clustering up again a little bit. 
Yeah, the cue ball had a little hop on there. He, he levied almost a 22-mile-an-hour break. It was 21.95. Yeah, the 310, obviously a mess. The one nine very playable. The two, I don't know if it passes the eight, but the combo's not terrible. You know who I hadn't seen here? Now, I know he's not in the 10-footer. I looked at the draw, but just hadn't seen him at all. And, and it's Corey Duell. Oh, yeah, we had dinner yesterday. Oh, so he's so, here? Yeah, he's okay, definitely great, here. Great. Okay, coming two rails here. He kind of pointed below the six a little bit. No reason to take a huge chance with the 310 the way it is. So just make sure you come clear with the cue ball. Uh, that's going to catch the six. Okay, he's all right, though. If he had gotten really nice and tidy on this combo, Mark, he may be able to develop the two to get a nice little angle to come into the three somehow. But now being a little off angle and a little further away, I don't know if he can really hold the two ball. Yeah, it's clearly tight, and you cannot afford to try to do too much with the cue ball. Yeah, and I think he's going to play the combo for sure and see what the two does to develop the three. I think he's going straight in. Is he really? I think there's enough room. No. Oh, boy. That was tough. You that know. was. And mentally, you know, when you have a 310 the way it is, you know, mm -hmm. may maybe doesn't make you. Yeah, bear down to the yeah, dimension as, that I, you I need hate to. to say not as focused, but something happens there. It seems like these guys didn't make this trip to not be focused. All right, he's got to really look at not trapping himself here. Very flat on the two. If you try to produce something to get to the three, you got to be careful. Yeah, he was trying to see measure up with his uh, setup there. Elevated inside spin. <laughs> trying to pinch him on the eight now. Yep. Yeah. Boy, well executed. Good shot. Yeah, just keep it simple. Can't really do much. Really good shot. You know, we'll see how his game comes along, and I think he'll pick it up, that being Roberto. But it's one of those little mild underdogs for the all-around if he happens to get his game going. I'm, I th you know, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say he's one of the top ten bankers in the room, but he can certainly uh, play the game and get going playing the game. Uh, you know, of course, the one pocket, we've seen what he's done here in the last couple of years in the one pocket. I think these races to three. He's the prime kind of candidate to sneak through and win that. And then his nine ball. All right, do you go? I like to use the rail if I'm going to draw into him here instead of just straight drawing by self. But Is that because you want to take that point on the side pocket out of it? Or I just get a better feeling that way, you know, drawing into the balls. I feel like I hit my line a little better. I know it's crazy, but. So Gomez, nice draw to break him out, but he did not receive an offensive shot from it. A lot of opposite hands in this match here, Mark. <laughs> yeah, I know. One guy only uses the bridge left-handed. The other guy is naturally right-handed, plays left-handed. That'll he, work. Yeah, he's going to – he got him, I think, pretty good. No jump cues here at the Derby, so – i will have to kick right before the side pocket with a little side spin. Just a hair. Oh, he's looking at two rails now, and actually I like this better. Gives him a chance to get underneath the three, maybe. Knock it in the side. He could get him underneath the four with the cue ball. And this is one of these where the hit is a little bit harder, but the results are much better if you do hit it. Yeah, just not a whole lot of English. Yeah, that's the shot I like right there. Beautiful hit. Great effort. And he's somewhat rewarded. He didn't sell out. Doesn't appear unless that three goes by the seven, but I don't think it does. Yeah, now is he going to really move the three a lot, or is he just going to kill the cue ball? I thought he was going to drift the cue ball down by the ten. That's what I thought. but uh, Looks like he's playing it, so oh, he did okay. have enough for him. Nice shot. 
Uh, that shot right there will do a lot for your confidence if you revert to a nice clean strike. Six does go, so getting across on the five with a little angle. Just a little high ball, one rail at the 10. Could use a second rail, I guess, but I guess it was definitely going to always be the second rail. Yeah, well done there. Superman, nice shot. opens up a one-game lead. Mr. Smooth, John Moore, will have the break. You know, we have some of the best fans in the world here. I know Bob Holtz is tuned in up in La Crosse, Wisconsin. We've got uh, Yesman Lelici. Romania, my old pal John Ragusa, he's a great pool player and even a better person. He's a Vietnam veteran, has a purple heart, and he recently passed away, but nevertheless I know he's looking in. More just to the left of the center of the table. Real square on the one. Again, the ball's going long as far as the four railers. But not getting the pop there, you know. That's what I'm not seeing with the cue ball at all. I know the 10-footer, the it seems like the guys need to take a little bit before they get the timing down. You know, that extra foot, I guess, does make a huge difference on the timing of the break. Okay, you can shoot the gap between the 3-5. He can come all the way down for the two in the side whatever he's comfortable with, with the bridge. Looks like there's enough, enough angle to do either. I like that simple play, though. And he gained just enough angle to maybe come one rail between the 7-8, maybe not. I don't know, maybe a little straightish. He has to draw the ball, maybe, huh? No, he's looking at just cinching the cue ball over here by the side cushion and back cutting the three, which... So that means that eight is a problem for him. And I think he maybe draws into the five. I think he's heavier than we think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He almost cleared the five. And now in a great position with the four, five, six near everything in the center of the table. Very minimal cue ball movement needed, it looks like, anyways. I probably come back out for the five in the same pocket here. I don't think there's any reason to make an in between stroke. Um, maybe it's full of me. Maybe he just lays this up and plays a five on the side. But Oh, he came across for the other side. Okay. That was very natural as well. Thought he had a hair more angle where he was going to come above the five easily. That was not a good shot. That, that yeah, but weird. that was a stroke, though, right? It was yeah. a little like uh, the timing of it, the back and forth was definitely off. Decelerated. Got, uh, well, that's what I've seen the first several mistakes he's made is the backswing looks a little fast, Mark, to where he's kind of guiding the forward swing a little. Well, this is a real treacherous little circumstance because he's got to negotiate the nine here, back cut to the corner pocket, which makes it small. Good job. 
Much smoother on that delivery. Yeah, and, you know, anytime you're going into a ball like that, you, you know, good chance you come away with a playable shot, but, you know, he falls up nasty over on that rail a little and gets a little flat. Could be very difficult to get on the nine. Boy, what a good shot. He had the muscle up and the warp it out of the scratch. Didn't have enough action on the cue ball to travel at 10 feet. Falling a little straight in. So. Uh, He's going to get on the 50-yard line. Yeah, yeah, I was wondering if he kind of could let up on that as well a little bit. <laughs> so um, I always talk about with the with the best players, and, and this is pretty much any sport, when they're off or when nerves are high, the let up on the swing is the more common That's thing really for the cool. better players. So they don't over hit the ball very often. Amateurs, they tend to over hit when they're nervous. Or pros, they tend to let up on the downswing when nerves are high. See it with golfers a lot of times. They don't get the putts to the hole. They talk about it a lot. And the bad thing is it doesn't take much, right, Mark? Oh, I, mean, no. I mean, just just a just a it's little bit of a hiccup. <laughs> the uh, when you have a long shot, you, you're you're required to hit the object ball less than a millimeter margin of error. Yeah. You know, so if you have any little flicker in your stroke at all, you're you're easily lose a fraction of a millimeter. Yeah, you don't carry the spin down the table as far as you would think, that which really affects maybe throwing a ball a little bit or yes. a, a number of yeah. circumstances, right? The curve of the cue ball, the deflection, everything. And then right with that, your confidence goes down. If you actually knew how hard or how difficult the small target was, you probably wouldn't even play pool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cue ball got away. He's lucky it stayed on the table in practice. He he did scratch. Yeah. He's it's still spinning. So that tells you definitely don't want to put the side spin on the ball in the ten ball rack, ten ball break. That was. Now this looks like to me, if he can beat the six, he can come down naturally for the three in the side. I don't know if he can hold. I guess he could probably hold for the corner, huh? Yeah, they don't like to play it that way, though, because it's kind of that, that decelerating or it's easy to where they rather kind of let their shaft out and make a bigger swing if they can. Yeah, the three on the side isn't terrible. Oh, he made that look easy. Made a great shot. Yeah, real nice. And he's This will check that timing. He's got to move the ball a little bit with a little bit of a slight angle. Can't hold for the five right there. So he's got to let the stroke out a little. You know, all three of his breaks were 21 plus miles per hour, just right, just below 22. But that last one, you can see, he really got a downward hit because that cue ball was hopping, and uh, now you're not getting the same action on the table. You're not getting the linear pass, uh, energy pass through the rack to move balls to the other end of the table. The cue ball is hopping, so that yeah. was a, a less effective 21.78. Yeah, and he missed the one a little more too. Uh oh. This is going to get funny over the seven. Uh oh, he has to hit it. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's a sign, though. I mean, like, of course you want to draw the ball there, but you want that cue ball to stay relatively close to the six. you got a bunch of pockets, right? I mean, that, that's a little bit of a sign to me of off as well. All right, eight ball, big ball here. We are playing all ball fouls. Yeah. The inside spin hurt. You know, and one thing I've seen from Roberto as well, which he doesn't always do it, but it's about 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10, is hadn't had, a, hadn't had that pause at the cue ball mm -hmm. uh, like he normally has a lot of times. So that'll help the backswing get a little quick sometimes without that pause. Has he bumped a 7 here just lightly off the rail? Oh, he held it. Okay, nice shot. That it was. Yeah, I agree with what you're saying. I noticed that uh, Roberto breaks down on his form. He doesn't have the pause right before he delivers on the shots that he's iffy on. Mm -hmm. and, and normally when he wants power, you know, it's almost like he's winding up to shoot instead of, like, uh, right. separating the pre-strokes from the backswing. John's one of the best at that, rolling the ball in softly. Back in the day, righty, when he was on the rail and he had to level out, he was one of the best at that. Mm-hmm. 
That made that pocket play enormous. Okay, on the new fell, watch out. You don't come two rails getting on top of the nine. It's easily done. Grabs a little more than you think. Oh, he stayed clear of that. Speed's going to have to be good. I don't think he wanted to cross the top side of the 10 there, but it'll, he'll take it. Normally, you'd come inside the 10, right, Mark? Yes. Yeah, you got away from him a little bit. Now, John's backswing with the left doesn't seem as slow and deliberate. Not saying it's quick by any means, but it doesn't seem quite as slow and deliberate as his righty used to be. And now 2-2, two, two, is that right? 3-2. Three, 3-2, three, two. Two, three, yeah. two, excuse me. of these matches has been great overall. The Speed Demon uh, break app, it's, it's a pretty cool thing. It operates off of sound, but it's far more sophisticated than any of the previous iterations of this type thing. Far more uh, sensitive than a, a traditional radar can be. So it's the sound of the collision of the cue ball into the rack. It's and, got uh, something to do with it. And the sound of the tip. Yeah. Hitting the cue ball. Yep. Oh, okay. There's two big uh, noise events that happen. <laughs> and so, but it used to be the microphones weren't sophisticated enough, so it would only give you a vague proximity. This is, you know, accurate to within, you know, one thousandth of a mile per hour. And then they also it's calibrated for where they're at on the 10-foot table because that takes off a mile an hour being uh, on a 10-footer versus a 9-footer getting to the head ball. Once the tip leaves the cue ball, there's no more propellant, much like a bullet leaving the barrel of a gun. It's Even though it's going like mad, it's already decelerating. There's a 20.9. So our brake speeds have been pretty consistent. And when we watched Jason Shaw play here the other day, and he was raining balls in. I bet it wasn't it was 22. I bet it was more around 18 20. And a half. I was going to say 18 and a half. That's yeah. what I was going to say. I don't really think it's the heavy break that gets the job done here most of the time. And you can see he moves seven balls to the side pocket or beyond, but nothing found the pocket. Yeah, there's definitely, you know, a path for for many balls in the 10 ball rack. Uh, it's just a matter of like, like Mark was saying, getting that connection and getting the timing right. Funny, nope. funny little <laughs> shot here with the rail first. It, I don't, I don't know what. I don't think this is the play in my mind, but that's going for a lot. That's asking for a lot there. You know, ironically, talking about the break, the, the success was found with slower speeds, except for Shane Van Bonen, who was a steady in that twenty-two yeah, range. Yeah, but his connection is so exactly. much different than everyone <laughs> exactly. else's. I mean, we. You talk about, you know, the guys playing the balls in the sides, right? But he really gets them all tracking. He gets the, the corner balls tracking better than anyone. He gets the balls that are next to the corners going one rail towards the, 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 the top pockets. He gets the balls in the side. Really, uh, at least one of them usually very accurate towards the side. Mm -hmm. What is that, our third or fourth bank from John I here early it. in this match? Oh, and he's made them all perfect. A little motivation, reminder of him being that Banks champion in 2012. Now, this one could fall on you a little bit. The combo's not bad, the 3-6, but coming across, he could end up a little thin. Oh, he went into it. I don't argue the play, but I thought the 3-6 wasn't too bad. Mm-hmm. First real open miss there from John. All right, watch out. Easy to not get a rail if you're trying to get cute with the cue ball here. Oh, he hit it hard enough for sure.
Okay, a little in between here. Very difficult is. to kill, but very difficult to go back and forth as well. And it's amazing how that nine balls. There's always that ball out there <laughs> that makes it a huge, huge yeah. target to get around. Man, this is tough. You're thinking there's one ball. How can a 10-foot table have one ball be a big problem? But that nine ball is a big problem. Wow, what a hit that was. That was. There ain't, there ain't too many in the building going to hit that any better. And it's really unfortunate to not gain as much, a little more angle. You're right. I think the six flicks in, but the four is going to have a lot of uh, pace on it, I think. So I don't know if he can play it. I, I might play for the four cross corner here. It banks around the six cross corner and gets you shape up the table. Yeah, that's just trying to create too much with the top inside there, Mark. There wasn't enough angle. Yeah, that was that was really weird. Uh, Mr. Smooth uh, was not smooth there. He, he definitely wasn't committed to that shot. I mean, it wasn't even close. Yeah, this is touchy. Is he just going directly off the three, trying to go behind the four? Oh, no, he just played the three softly. Good shot. Important to get that snooker right there. Great effort. The right-hander Gomez can reach this, so he's going to have to make a little bit of a touchy shot getting on the on the four. Got to make sure to stay away from getting elevated on the eight. That would be pretty much a doom on this 10-footer. Well, he's got some work here, Mark. Mm -hmm. the five's a little covered up. Yeah. The eight and nine making the four to the five a little difficult. From where he's got to get on the five, the seven comes into play, getting on the six a little bit, and then he's got to get from the six to the seven. So nothing easy for Superman. Got to kill his ball. Now this is the type of shot when he's in stroke, like a no-brainer for him, just killing it and coming between the eight and nine, one rail. Oh, yeah, I see him. To me, again, the transition was pretty fast. Back, you know, the backswing was kind of fast coming back. And I think that's a lot of shot selection there, too, Mark. Like, he's not feeling yeah. that great. And he would normally kill that ball no problem. Um, or even, you know, shoot the shot he wanted right there right. And, with no problem. He got the cue ball right where he wanted it. But the problem is, to put it there, the object ball doesn't go in the pocket. Yeah. So John's going to take the shot, I think, from about where the four is at. He'll have to deal with that seven ball a little bit, getting on the six, but I think he's okay. Yeah, he pulled it back just enough, so he should be able to dodge the seven. Beautiful shot. Okay, he's going with a high ball now. At first, he was looking like coming backwards with the cue ball. 
to me that looked like a little more dangerous route. I like this, keeping it real simple. Now he has really a choice. He can go forward a little bit, play the nine on the side. He can stun back for the nine in the corner. This 10 ball ties the score, three games apiece. You know, one thing when you're when you're in battle like this, where it's a tough match, and uh, both guys are struggling a little bit, it's really hard to make yourself say, you know, this break isn't really working. Well, I've, neither one of us has rained balls in. I gotta take off three miles an hour. It's hard to throttle back at that because you, you feel like you're not giving 100 percent when you do it. You know, it, yeah. But that's really what needs to take place, though, because none of the breaks have been very good. No. And it certainly doesn't look like something repeatable as well, meaning as far as getting results. So I think you're right as far as just a couple miles miles per hour off. It's, you know, you got to start somewhere. So it may not work out exactly right. The timing might not ex be exactly right, the first change. But I think you do got to change. You can't be stubborn. Mm-hmm. You know, it's one thing if you're saying to yourself, man, I still haven't hit him how I wanted. You know, that's that's one thing. But, you know, for the most part, they haven't been terrible hits on the one. There's been a couple of them that aren't, weren't the best. But Here you can see Roberto hitting downward, and this is what gets that hop. A little better there. Yeah, That definitely. was much better timing. Much calmer through impact, right? Yeah. Four block the one going straight to the pocket. And a great spread on the on the rack. The ball went in the side. I think we'll get a number on, but it'll definitely be more around twenty, I believe. Twenty, maybe maybe hovering twenty one. But might have flashed up and I missed it. Yeah, I didn't see it either. So. Not sure what he's looking at there. Really difficult safety. Don't think he's going to take the one four on. Well, he's kind of popping the ball a little bit here. Oh, he could cheat it. Okay. Golly. The mark will be good chat. Yeah, sl slid the ball in. So that was a reward of the new conditions, the felt conditions, and now we'll see a big draw stroke. This will show us a little bit about the timing, how he's cueing. Be interesting to see if he takes his final pause on this one. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, not bad. Oh, nice hit. Yeah. Really nice hit. And didn't over hit <laughs> it either. Whew. Yeah, that pause at the cue ball, I tell you, a couple of years ago we had, you know, each one of the Moscone guys at my house for four or five days each, and we took a ton of videos, and <clears throat> it was amazing. The common denominator, you know, say these guys shot a thousand video shots of you know, a video each, right? Uh-huh. And let's just say they, you know, they don't miss a whole lot, these guys, so let's just say they miss 10% of the time. Um well, it was something like 90% of that 10%, you know, the guys forgot to pause at the cue ball. It was an amazing stat. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what will happen is when you're training, you can forget a step. You get comfortable. You know, you, you get to swing in the ball well. You're shooting the same shot sometimes for a period of time. So you'll forget that little important step of that pause at the cue ball. The greats will even. But it was amazing to me. Me and Joey Gray, we went over the videos. and It's amazing how 
how common a denominator that yeah. pause at the cue ball caused a lot of misses and just not good timing. Or not their best timing, let's say that. Roberto Gomez, now, I don't know if he, yeah, you mm -hmm. see him smile. He wasn't trying to go forward at all mm -hmm. right there. No. And that's a dead, uh, that's a, a for sure sign of letting up on the downswing. Because what happens is, Mark, at least I believe so and I've seen it, is when you let up, right? Your tip's not to the ball in the amount of time you think it's going to be. So you're, you kind of break down the stroke, and the tip almost always yeah. comes up a little bit, right? Yeah. A little off angle here. Going to have to draw a short side. Yes. Yeah. And he's just going to go deep and just try to get the cue ball over there by the side rail. Oh. Yeah. Well, he went way too deep. And again, no pause at the cue ball at all. And we've seen a couple balls bobble here today that probably didn't yesterday, but I still think it has a little to do with the delivery. You know, you can create a ball that wants to bobble a little more. What a big shot this is. Wow. Sweet. Man, what a hit. Sweet. Did he hit it too well? <laughs> no. He deserves a good fate. Sure does. Around. And now maybe for his first lead of the match. <laughs> Mr. Smooth, 4-3 in front. And rack number eight now. Mora set the break. CP takes a little bit off. A lot of the same. You can tell the four railers going way long. It's a good sign. Second ball is going long a little bit as well. well those both went short. So we're going to get to see Roberto here. To start off game number eight, got a nice cut, little cut shot on the one. Does bank as well. Looks like he's going to play the bank. Maybe a little help. Easier with the cue ball. Yeah, he fell on the thin side of this. Yeah. I don't mind drawing this ball. Maybe if I bump the three, it's okay. I'd really hate to get snookered trying to move the ball like with the top English, trying to get around the seven and the five and get back for the three somehow. I think a soft draw into the three is probably percentage-wise okay. You got to buy the three even. <laughs> Still okay, though. I think he goes by the eight here. 
May have to take a little distance on the four, but I think this is playable. May need to flick this in with a hair of right English to beat the eight. Straight high ball might go into the eight. That way you can hit the three a little thicker. Yeah, nice shot. short on the draw there yeah good thing for him he's got a nice two rail you know he's got to make a nice shot on the five of course but a nice high ball with a hair of left here should get him to a good position on the six and the high ball takes the eight out of play so you're not going to ever get trapped behind the eight as long as you hit it with high well i guess you could he's going to get awfully flat he's got a shot i believe but I don't know how close he can get to the seven. I can get out there. He can creep it out there. Yeah, right now he'd be settled for right at the head ball of the rack if he could get out about that that length. Two diamonds up table. Yeah, if you smooth it, you should be able to get up there. If you hit it, you know, if you try to force it now, it doesn't want to do a whole lot for you. So he hit <clears> it way <throat> heavy there. Um, the ball did not squirt. Now he's landed real flat on the seven, which is going to require a big, massive stroke. You know when you're, you know you're feeling good, right? These yeah. shots, these shots do nothing. You almost really like these shots because they can really make you feel even better about things. Willing to take the challenge on, but struggling a little bit. <laughs> you're wanting something maybe a little easier, but oh, oh what a nice hit that was! <laughs> yeah, the speed's going to be pretty darn good. It looks like needs hey, a little bounce. Perfect. Tremendous shot. Yeah, he's had some rough patches, and then he's had moments of absolute brilliance, you know. So we we know this is the, the earmarks of someone that's won this tournament before or is a complete player all the way around. His form hasn't been the absolute best. But yeah, he's fighting through it, though, and, you know, it just kind of shows you it just doesn't take a whole lot <laughs> to be off in, in our sport. And you have to learn to win with your B game. You don't always yeah. get your A game. So. 4-4 is our score. Absolutely. Now John's probably, you know, I would, you know, TPA's, all right, more a little bit behind Gomez, but I don't think John's made a ball in the break yet. We'll have to break. We saw him take a little off and was much more effective in his last break. Yeah, he definitely hit him squarer than he just has the, been. Yeah, just the transition was smoother. If you just rely on that, everything else really kind of takes place. You know, that was much better, like not even close. Really square hit. The yeah. three found the side from right behind the one. Looks like he's going to get a shot here. A great shot on the one. A little stretched. Uh, the two's a little covered up, but very doable. Maybe he goes one rail into the seven. We'll see. But 
just it's just the connection. You can see the explosion of the rack, much more movement on all the balls, and that's <laughs> that's just a dead sign of what's going on with the break. Yeah. Okay. We're having that extension put on, and I think maybe a hair of inside English. So we'll, we talked about that yesterday. Hit a little to the high part of the pocket, Mark. Yes, he did. Yeah, almost squared it enough. But yeah. Mercifully, he used soft speed. I think if he had greater speed on there, it would have. He overcuts it too much, maybe, right. huh? We saw one of those yesterday. I can't remember exactly who it was that overcut that one ball. But. He's looking at the conservative play of just trickle the cue ball ahead. He wanted to measure off the angle that he'll cut the four into the side. That way it's not a surprise when he gets there. It just feels it plays more comfortably despite the fact it's the same shot. Yeah. And that little extra time, right, is something to get used to, especially when you're trying to maybe get out of a little bit of a I wouldn't say funk maybe, but a little bit off. I think that little extra time even on the easy shots mm -hmm. uh, really makes a huge difference settling yourself. And just like the, the greats we talked about yesterday, we look for both these guys to improve as the match goes on and the tournament goes on. Okay, you can see the work from the seven to the eight, nothing easy. This is where he wants to draw one rail and get very kind of tidy close to the seven. I don't think he'll come for the side, Mark. I wouldn't. Well, he's going to get on the back side of it a little <laughs> off here. He's got a funny little angle there. Sure does. <laughs> Stretched for the right-hander a little bit. So easy to lose a little bit of power. Can he draw this one rail? Is that where he's going to try and get th across the table and maybe get a little thin on the eight for the cut? It's Oh, well, look at this. Yeah, He's a funny that. guy. You know, he beat Tony Shohan in the one pocket out there in National. Oh, I watched and, it, yeah. And he was uh, pretty far behind in that match. But, boy, did he ever come with some big shots. He was a very exciting guy to watch play. Look at that nice hit. He absolutely stole that tournament away from, from Tony. Uh, Tony. Tony played great in the finals. I don't even know if Roberto played better, <laughs> to be honest with you. Tony yeah. played great in the finals, but then yeah. Roberto just does, does what he does in one pocket. He sticks around. Waits for an opportunity and then executes. And uh, two two of those games, he was dead in the water yeah. and ran out from absolutely nowhere. I remember he made a crucial three-rail bank and then ran like eight and out. To, yeah. And there, but it was a hard eight and out. <laughs> Every shot was iffy. Wasn't a clean, easy routine type. Well, oh. that was a nice break and run out there. First time in the match. Oh, very powerful break. Break and run there from Roberto Gomez. He retakes the lead by one. Five to four. And John Morrill will have the break. So his last two breaks have been really on, on point. That being Roberto. And I think John's got to do the same, Mark. Take a little off. Yeah, you really want to generate some offense from the break because when you're playing someone that you're equal, which these guys are all pretty equal, the only way to distinguish yourself in there is to not gunfight every rack. You want to get a couple racks where the other opponent doesn't get to play. And that helps to give you some separation. Yeah, you've been keeping it. What's the most we've had on breaking runs during a match? Five? Maybe? Yeah, better. Better. Yeah, better. Five, yeah. yeah. I definitely took some off. 100% took some off. Real square hit. Yeah, he's not getting the results, but <clears throat> 20.72 there. Now the two on the opposite end, pretty flat on the one, a lot of traffic. So he try to draw this like maybe between the 3-8, two rails? Oh, no, he's stunning between the 10-8, one rail. Oh, no, never mind. That was an interesting path to me. Yeah, it was. 
You had to between, go between a lot of ball. <laughs> you had to go between the five and six. Then you had to come in the between old the three nine. Ten. Yeah. yeah, round the nine. Yeah, that was avoid uh, the corner. He liked it though, so he he saw the path. He liked the shot. Could bump the three here. It looks like maybe if it spreads. No, he got by it. Nice shot. Getting a little funny here. He's gonna have to use a lot of the table. It looks like Mark. Maybe top right, yeah. go one, two, three, four rails for the four. Hmm. I mean, it's a shot you stay away from, but it actually looks like the shot here, considering the 10 and 7, the way they lay. The three is so far out from the pocket that you really have to use a lot of inside, which makes it easy the way you yeah. good. Yeah, <laughs> it's a shot he likes, too. So I'm going to get an angle. Great shot. It probably deserved a little more respect, but nevertheless, we recognize it. That was very missable ball, especially on a 10-foot table. Yeah, stay nice and heavy here. That way you hold the ball nice. I mean, he really, you know, I, th I thought he would come out a little more than that, but that's okay. Well, he kind of let up, and, and yeah. much like what you alluded to, when, when he had the power of that ball onto the side to go four cushions, we know he liked it because the stroke was stayed together much better. He, yeah. he did get through the ball. It matches he did have up. A pause. Yeah, yeah, the front and back matched up a lot more because he's definitely accelerating on that shot, right? So, but I, you know, I, I know Roberto pretty well as far as his game and stuff. So, it just feels like when I saw him play early in the year, I was like, man, maybe he took a little time off during the holidays, mm -hmm. you know, and. But he's a guy I know that practices a ton, hits a lot of balls. So I don't expect him to stay a little bit off, but I think he's still just a hair struggling. But fighting through it, though. Oh, yeah. He's got a lot of fight. We saw that before. Well, the thing about Roberto, right, is he's one of those guys that, that can make a lot of different unique shots, you know, situational shots that don't come up all the time. And when you're out of stroke, you're a little off with the cue ball, and you have to make some of those, yeah. you know, a little bit more spin shots like we saw on the three or maybe on this opening one ball. He's got all those little unique shots. And like Nick used to say, you know, sometimes you play a tournament and you're just an inch or two out of line on every shot the entire tournament, it seems like. You just got to fight through it. Yeah. And I would say that describes Roberto in this set. Yeah, because, you know, he'll tell you even. His shot selection isn't always what would be traditional or what a lot of people would think. And when, after he shoots, the, you know, a lot of his shot selections make sense. Uh, but when you're a little off and you tend to maybe play the rack a little different sometimes, it can get you even a little more out of line. And Roberto coming with shot after shot. That cue ball drifting towards the side pocket did not do anything for his confidence. Uh, but closed it out with a nice out there off of a dry break. Yeah. 6-4 is our score. Now opens up a two-game lead. After 10 racks, it's 6-4, to four, heading into a rack 11. Where's he at, 877 on the TPA? The and given the circumstances, I think that's just a remarkably high score because uh, it seems like he's made quite a few unforced errors along the way. But that also means he's pocketing a lot of balls to balance that out. Yeah, and we saw a few errors early, right? And I think what we're seeing, because we know his game and we know um, that you wouldn't chalk him up as errors, but he's been a little out of line here and there, even though he's recovered, mm -hmm. right? So it hasn't been as pretty as we're used to seeing, maybe. Yeah. So it makes us feel like he's maybe made a few more errors that he that yeah. aren't on paper, maybe, those errors. Uh, yeah, right. Just overrunning here and just having to come with a shot. Overrunning there, having to come with another shot. So he scratched the screen, the strings a few times, but he's still playing pretty good music. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. But the break for him has turned around here in the last few. That's a huge difference in the match, in my opinion. Nine and two right behind the one ball. Nine's a little. He put a little more into it. Made the five. 
What's the seven going to do? Give a little bump on the one. He's got a nice shot. Not an easy one. 21 to seven will be our break speed there. Now he's got to play it in the lower left. The angle goes towards the four and nine. Can he beat the four and nine here, Mark, to get position on the two? This is tough. Does the one go by the seven in the other corner? That's what he'd like to shoot. The lower left, or what would be your lower right on your screen? Pretty nice pause there. Yeah, and the transition from Good. back and forth was really nice. You know, when you see the backswing and the front swing kind of look like they're working together, they're not separated so much. Yeah. That's about all you need, really. That's all that transition's all about. Really looking like the front and back are, are a unit. Felt a little funny here, and this is mainly because the four to the six. If he goes to cushions, even if he ends up bumping the seven, that's okay. He'll have a shot, yeah, the, just the stop because it plays easier than trying to get work it back there. Then the angle gets more severe. Yeah. So taking it from here and then <clears throat> allowing the cue ball to lightly bump the seven here. You're not likely to get hooked. You're not going to also get perfect position, but you'll have a nice shot. I think he might be running for the side here. Yeah, he's drawing. Oh, he nice was able shot. to avoid that. And that cue ball has just another six inches. Yeah, and this is what I was talking about, you know, just not right in line. He's having to work hard. So it doesn't seem as. Cannot fault him on that one, though, because how much that draw takes dictates that last six inches. You know, if he bends oh, it. Oh, no, a not at all. Yeah, it was yeah, a yeah. Great effort. Yeah, he's looking much smoother. That was inside spin. That's like his favorite shot. Now he's back <laughs> in line. Yeah. And it's a, that's a funny shot to me. There's a few of those, right? Like when you first learn that shot, Mark, it's like the greatest thing since white bread, right? But you don't use it very much. As you get better in the game, you don't use that draw to the side rail with inside running very right. often. It's one you actually stay away from. Right. Much more only when it's you know necessary. Well, the other point or is all that you have. when you talk about inside spin, we're never as good despite the fact it squirts at the same rate but we only use it 10% of the time. 90% of the time it's outside, so we're always more confident and comfortable outside. Speed's a little strong here. Yeah, I think he was coming for the side, which I probably wouldn't have myself, but. I don't know. Look, at it's pretty severe in the side. It's, I'm, I'm not saying it's not doable. I'm just saying it. I don't think he was playing for the side there. Well, you might be right after He's gonna he kind of shrugged his shoulders pound there. Pound this around. Oh, drilled it. Nice shot, nice recovery shot. We've seen him have to play the pockets he wasn't intending to on multiple occasions yeah. here, but he's hanging tough. Oh, my. Yeah, that was a huge game, too. And his tip keeps coming up, you know, like right there he's hitting right English tip comes up you hit more of the cue ball and you deflect more uh right. that's just all there is to it so what a huge shot there to take a three game lead especially and with john struggling on the break and it would have been a break and run out from a real awkward set of circumstances he had to make so many tough shots at that particular rack positionally speaking And 6-5 is our score. Moore has gifted the game. Yeah, now John hasn't really cha changed break locations. He's changed the speed a little bit in his last five. one. May change the and location. Will be breaking. Looks like we're going to take a timeout. A 3.30 matchup. It's going to feature a really good one. Joshua Filler. Hey, everybody, Alex we're going to take a momentary break. And we'll be and right back. And then our early evening match is Everly and M all right, John Moore was just gifted a game. Score is now 6-5, we're all back. Moore is set to break. It's the four and the nine right behind the one. The two and the six will be your corner balls. And he's moved the cue ball a hair, not a whole lot, just a little bit. A 
Took some speed off, just not getting the, the movement. Uh, and John, that can start to get very frustrating. Super difficult shot on the one here. Not only that, he's, I don't think he can shoot it with a ton of pace. It does look like the shot that wins you to rack most likely, though, if he does happen to bury it, hold position on the two. That was more a softest break of the match thus far, 19-7-7. Looks like, uh, yeah, he buried it. So now perfect little nice angle to draw between the 6-9. Fours over the side leads you to the five easily. Six is nice and open. Should get out here, Mark. Yeah, that would take some of the sting out of that tough rack that he ran all the balls except one on. All right, just absolutely perfect there. He's just going to make sure stopping his ball is okay on the four. He'll go and look. Looks like it's just fine. Probably wants to fall down to the bottom rail if, if it feels good. He doesn't have to. He can certainly stay above the five and cut it, which is probably the best percentage play, to be honest with you. It's nice to go down below it. It makes things easy, but you could, you could get a little out of line doing that. Now he ended up perfect. But he could have just pinched that back two inches right there, Mark, and cut the five and just yeah. come one rail up for the six. It's hard to not want to go down there and get nice and kind of in that cherry zone on the five, right? But yeah. I like it, what he's looking at here. He was confident, uh, confident about getting there. He knows he gets out from here from this angle just a little bit more often. Yeah, he, I thought he wanted to get straight on the six to stop his cue ball to take the seven in the corner and have a nice natural angle. I think he did. He's shaking his head a little bit. So he's gotten a little angle here on the six. <clears throat> Maybe short side on the seven for the opposite side pocket. Absolutely. That goes. And it's pretty go simple. The, he can also go in the corner short side. Yeah. I think that's what he wanted to hold for, but I don't know. If, yeah, he could hold it. Okay, nice. Because the seven doesn't pass the ten, I don't believe, so he had to hold it for the for that corner there. Leads him by the ten easily. Ooh. Oh, that was... Hmm. Used a lot of the rail. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if you we saw <laughs> that on the camera, but he overcut <clears throat> that ball a lot to the right side of the pocket. That's why he didn't hit the line he wanted with the cue ball. Came much wider. Um, and on top of the nine ball. Well, this is going to be tough. I think he's going to have to play one rail position for the side pocket where he'll be standing right now. Like a soft draw. Yeah. Yeah, because you want the draw to take. Shouldn't be a problem. Actually, sometimes you'll overcut this thinking you'll ne no way to overcut this. But... Nice yeah, shot. Good, good recovery. Call. Yeah, but a, another 10 ball, a little missable after our last rack. Remember what happened in 100%. game number 11. One of the biggest things here is you can't look at this as a winning ball. You have to look at this. I still have to control the cue ball. I'm still playing the same shot. I'm going to play position just as usual. So that was a good out. 7-5 now. And after our 12 score. racks now, Gomez regains a two-game lead, seven games to five, and he'll be breaking in rack 13. This match has not been as clean as what we've seen many of the sets played here, but it's almost more real and more interesting because uh, the 10 foot table is definitely ex extracting a toll on these guys. And you know, it really makes their skill sets shine up. When you see somebody just overpower the table and just run through a set, it's not nearly as fascinating to watch because it just looks automatic. And this is much more like reality here. Yeah, and you talked about it in the opening of the event that, you know, these guys are amazing when they're on. Uh, you're not going to see, you know, a ton of difference in their games from the 9 to the 10. But really when they're just a hair off or a little uncomfortable is where you really see it show up. 
I think that's what we're seeing here and, and what is match number five of the Bigfoot challenge. Now, Roberto's definitely made a better adjustment on the break. So he's made what now would be the th three in the side a lot. He's made uh, the ball next to the nine. Is it the four? He's mm -hmm. made that ball straight back underneath him a lot or a few times now. All right, the three looks good. Oh, it got kissed. So cue ball was a little cue ball was a little top spin there. Yeah, trickled forward, hit the missed the head ball from being perfectly square. And look at the two and the three, how they line up. Yeah, More. we s saw this yesterday with a few matches where it seemed like uh, you know things were laying a little tougher for one player than the other. He's got a little bit of angle to force the ball here, boy. That'd be one heck of a shot. Force the ball into the two three. Dangerous shot. Oh, he miscued. You could hear it all the way up here. Looks like, yeah. Got options. You could bank the one back up table and go into the five with the cue ball pretty easily, it looks like. Get the snooker with the 10 that way. Could run the ball. I don't really see a guaranteed snooker running the cue ball, though. He's trying to get him underneath that 2 3. Is he going to do this, really? Hmm. <laughs> wow, tremendous shot. He got there. This is a three foul situation looking to happen here if he doesn't hit this. I mean, this is exactly the kind of situation you, you could three foul one of these top players. Very hard to do. Oh, yeah. The, the one thing, though, if you do get ball in hand from here, is that you can set the one, you know, place the one down by the uh, problem area, the two and the three, and tidy up the cue ball behind the ball and then kind of force the action that way. Yeah, it looks like he's just going one rail. Watch out. You don't want to move the 10 into position for an early win, just in case you give up ball in hand. I think Bad he caught hit. the seven first. I'm surprised he kicked with that much speed with the two three being there, kind of locked up, Mark. A lot of times you'll slow kick at the at that ball, trying to really keep your accuracy, knowing you can't really go much further with the yeah. two three locked up, right? Yeah. So, or actually, is the two makeable? It, it looked like it bumped open. Yeah, on maybe that the safety. two's a little makeable. But it's it's real awkward to get position. It, it's barely makeable is what he's developed down there. Yeah. I'm wondering if he's going to set up to try and open them up. You know, that's. I think he's just playing to bring the cue ball in between the two and the six. I think so, too. But I think Roberto always looks 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 at it like you did, to where yeah you can make the two, but it's going to be hard to get position on the three, because uh, it's going to be hard to draw off of that thin hit on the two. You're going to have to right. ease that ball in most likely. So, well, he's trying to break him up. Not going to get there. Oh, he hates this ball in hand, and you tangle yourself up. Man, talk oh. talk about giving up ball in hand. He's going to have to tie the four up here or something like that. I would tie the three right up on it again. Yeah, that's probably better. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. If he can shave the two, mm -hmm. go two rails on the 510, not, not too hard to do. He could run the ball, so shaving the two to the back of the nine maybe. Yeah. I'd like to barely rock the two here. I don't really want to open them up, I don't think. Right. That way, if you don't get the complete snooker, you're yeah. still okay. You don't want to give them a play. I think what you said first, the cue ball in behind the the five and ten, if you can get two cushions up on it. Pretty and this natural. is this is a really important uh, practice exercise that most people don't do, but playing safe with ball in hand. Because if you don't really know how to get to the five and ten here, then you really don't know how to play position and it will teach you a lot about angles and speed doing it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That was a, a really kind of an important 
safety play. Most of us practice our safeties when they come up in a match, and it's actually too late. That looks pretty good if the speed's okay. It looks real good. Oh, textbook. Yeah. And now he's opened up the two. A fantastic He's opened shot. up the five as well. The five was yeah. a little covered up also. Man. And it's a tough hit. I mean. Three rail? Three rail. <laughs> it's pretty ugly. Slowly. Yeah. I mean. Slowly three rails. I mean. I think you got to go three naturally at it. If you try to go four and then bump the two, I think right. you're going to get it underneath it. Oh, he's trying to go four. He's trying to hit just beyond the four ball. Oh, no. All right. Ball in the hand again. Roberto's on two. Yeah, and the four got a little funny. I mean, a little bit. Not saying it's not doable, but mm -hmm. you have to get on the five pretty nice to get back onto the six. So that four being covered up is is a touchy subject. Yeah. So touchy. Would you lay the two behind the eight and go one rail up underneath the four with your man on two fouls? I mean, it's laying like perfect to do that. You just set the cue ball up yep. a little bit right. above the two. Yeah. Bump the two underneath the eight, go to the bottom rail, and up onto the four. I mean, it's hard for the top players to not want to try and run out with ball in hand. But four, four to the five to the six is pretty tricky. And the other part of uh, maybe not choosing a run out here is that Roberto is on two fouls. That's what I was saying. And, you know, if you're on one foul, you're definitely trying to run out here. But having the guy on two already, seeing he really hadn't made that decision on the four yet either, which is kind of a little peculiar. And, again, the four is gettable. But getting on the five decent to get back on the six. I don't know if that's enough. Yeah, it's going to be real close. I don't think he can make it. I think it's a stop shot safety. Maybe yeah. you can just pin the cue ball to the eight. And well, he's got him on two. So, yeah. I mean, you know, he could win with this shot if he if he hits it, hits it well. It doesn't appear that it's... Uh, readily cross corner bank friendly because you'd have to use a soft speed. Yeah, going righty here now. Four would be nice to get over the five somehow if you got the four kind of over the five ten a little bit. That would be a Good nice job. Play, nice Good place job. for it. Yeah. Boy. A lot of times you get it near another ball, it cuts off a little piece of the ball and don't know if he's been notified he's on two fouls. I, I was looking at the referee to see. I was looking at John, and I didn't see any indication whatsoever. And this is oftentimes what happens is you'll have somebody on two fouls, and then you run a few balls, and then that's kind of forgotten. But It's easy to forget, believe me. I've done it in some big situations, both good and bad. Well, it's not going to be an issue. Solid that's hit. Good. Little in between her here, and the reason why is again getting from the five to the six. So he wants to go around the ten, but he doesn't want to get too long on the five. He can handle a little bit of length as long as he gets an angle. If you have to pinch those two rails inside the ten, that makes the speed tough. So he went around the ten. Oh, speed was pretty nice there. He right. may have to go short side, but he's got a real nice natural angle to come back with the cue ball. And the seven precludes the cue ball from possibly scratching if it gets away from you a little bit. Yeah, you can definitely go one row at the seven. John might come two behind it. Yeah. Oh, watch out for the speed. Is that too heavy? That's a lot, it seems like. And that's where you just, I know it went off on his hand, in his hand a little bit, but you really just got to coast the cue ball towards the seven one rail. So one thing about drawing the ball, when you have to draw the ball a little bit, touch, you know, can get away from you. 
He kind of knew it right when he hit it, huh, Mark? Yeah. Just going all out to make it two cushions. And he hit it pretty well. Not rewarded, however. No. And like most of the racks, the some movement from the eight to the nine here for Roberto, but nothing too too tough. Just pinches back a little bit, get a nice little angle to come one rail to the center of the table. Mm -hmm. Tapping the table, like, please don't get me too straight again. Oh, that's good. It's really good. Pretty much like ideal, besides a little bit of a stretch, but. Good job there. Maximum stretched out. It's amazing how inside English, we don't use it a lot, but it's a big recovery shot, right? Like a yeah. lot of times when you recover, not yeah. saying he was there on the nine, that's just pretty Gomez natural, but it seems like now. you use it a lot to get out of situations. It's eight to five. John Moore, Mr. Smooth will have the break. And I'll tell you the break, if we just saw those stats for John, it may tell you a lot about this match because these players you know, all players, it seems like, but even the pros, they really rely on the break getting them going a little bit, even in the alternate break format. And the break really has not been anything friendly to John here in this match. Right. It's rarely he's made balls. Rarely. I mean, it, I don't know if he's made any, actually. If you, if you make balls and get a shot, even if you have to play safe, you kind of feel like you're getting a little momentum, you get the feel of the table, but when you always have to come to the table kind of iced because you're never really at there for a sustained period of time it's hard to get a rhythm yeah you never really feel like you can stretch a lead unless the break's working it's hard to really come back that's for sure you can't put much pressure on your opponent if he if he feels like you're not breaking well and they get a three or four game lead very tough he's moved that more towards the center i think this is a good move he definitely squared him up there yeah and i don't know if maybe not getting the rack he wants 19.94. <clears throat> Looks like he has a sliver of the one. May still kick behind it. Kicks pretty easy. Nice path between the 5-7 to kick the, the one ball, one rail between the 3-9. I think he can see a piece of it, but I think he still kicks at this. I don't know. Uh, too much. Don't know if one, he can play the one off the eight in the side as far as an offensive shot. That looks tough. Uh, it does look playable. Mm -hmm. But where are you going with the cue ball? And it's such a thin hit, too. Yeah, to hard to be accurate, right? Is he crossing this? He can cross this. And draw between the uh, two, four. Oh, no, he played the safety. Oh, really good. He's got to slow down. He's got to slow down. He's okay. He got the five, and yeah. well, maybe not. Lo left yeah. him a lot more of the rail first, though, than he wanted, I think. I'll tell you, with the 310 and all that, if he can bank this back up towards the eight a little bit, coming off this side rail, he's got a lot of action to swing the cue ball safe. Oh, nice try. Speed was off just a smidgen, but it's hard to be critical of that when you're going rail first that far away from the one. He hit the right hemisphere of the one to get it go back down the rail. Yeah, yeah do you bring him back behind the two here? 
mark? I think so. I'm yeah, pretty full hit. Distance so. is your friend. Yeah, just slowly bring the cue ball back. Beauty. Well, he, he tried to really do something uh, more effective than just going behind. He tried to go two rails right at the two and pin that. And that was mission accomplished there for the most part. Yeah, he may have to dig on this cue ball a little bit with low right English to get these two rails between the five and eight and then back uh, on the back side of the seven here. Got to dig on this with low right. You'll see a little bend of the cue ball off the second rail. I think he gets there. If, I think then three rails plays easier than two rails if you're yeah. going to try to warp that first angle. I don't know if he can get that much on it to get the third rail mark. This is a pretty slight angle here, and he's got to hit it at a relatively light, not light, light, but decent. No, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Really yeah. good shot. Yeah, he, wow. had to, he had to bend it slowly to get that done. Boy. That's all feel. <laughs> That's manufacturing an angle and at long range, too. Yeah, with about tip and a half, two tips to spin, hitting downward on the ball. So a lot going on on that shot. A lot going on on this one as well. Beautiful hit. Really nice. Squeeze the one <laughs> home, kind of. On the wrong side here with the th no pocket for the three. I don't think it goes by the nine. So had to come with a shot, hard to gauge the cue ball perfectly, but I don't know if he can get out here. Looks like the three goes in the same pocket that the two does. If worse comes to worse, he may be oh, able to Oh, that go. would be okay. Yeah, take, he, yeah, take a little distance on the three. Or the four's on the bottom end of the table anyways. I think that's the shot, Mark. Yeah. You may even get past the side here, but that's okay. Well, he might be able to come inside of that, too. He can stay on this side of the 10. Oh, uh, really? The that? Two ball side oh, of the 10 wow. with inside. No. Nope. No, he went between them. Oh, boy. That was perfect, actually. Couldn't have been better. <laughs> no, exactly what From the Where he was ordered. at, he, he'd have been delighted to get even almost this good. Yeah, and I think that was a smart play. It was hard to get snookered. You might not get perfect. Right. You can defend yourself from there if you don't like your angle on the three. Got a little thinner than he maybe wanted, but the five plays in the side. Six mm. in the middle of the table, so easy to run the cue ball. He'd be switching sure. right-handed here, wouldn't he? No, maybe not. No. no I'm surprised. Is he using the second rail here? Okay. Nothing wrong with that. Just getting into the cue ball a little more, so you got to watch your speed. Nice release off that second rail, and looks like perfect speed, or pretty perfect. Now I'd be making sure that eight ball that the eight plays easily on the side. Right, because he, he can move it here if he wants easily. Yeah, this would definitely be the time to move it because you have a multitude of options. You just have to be careful that you don't move it into a problem for the six. Yeah, I mean, that would be a little hard luck. It looks like to me you would hit the eight thick enough to bank it away. Uh, t you maybe to the end rail to where it really did. You don't want to cut the eight super thin and let it go towards that pocket and maybe covers up that pocket a little bit on the six. That's if he touches the eight at all. Yeah, like that. You see how thick he caught the eight? Boy, that was a productive shot. There was a lot going on with that. To get the speed right, to get the cue ball right, to get the object ball to hit the eight right, and make sure the eight's out of the way. There's like four things that had to happen just right. Well, and the thing is you feel all those things when you're shooting it straight into <laughs> yes, the pocket. You do. But, you, you know, when you're shooting it towards a foreign you know, that's a foreign area. Even though you're playing off a ball and you've done it a thousand times, it's not something you still practice very often. Right. You're never as comfortable, and then there's always that last little moment of reluctance, and then you hit in between them, and, and things go awry. Your speed's off. All right. I don't think the eight passes the nine, so going to work the ball back over. One heck of an out he's making here from uh, that shot on the one after Roberto made one fancy kick shot. 
John came with a little better one ball in the corner and, and now he's trying to cut that lead back to two games. Did you ever play John's father? I played him two times and he robbed me both times, by the way. <laughs> there was another John Moore I played. I don't think it was his father. His, his father is Mario Mora, if I remember okay. correctly. Yeah, at the BCA Pro Invitational, that was one heck of a tournament they used to have. I'm surprised that one stopped. To be we, honest with you, yeah, we really need that and miss that one. That yeah. was a great field always, and his father was still one of the better players in, in, in Canada and got invited to that a couple of times Gomez and Mora. to represent Gomez has a two game lead and he'll have the break. The Canadians and eight to six now. Yeah, super nice out there. One time we were at that tournament, that BCA tournament you're talking about, and it was, they were playing it this year, uh, alternate the break format, and somehow Alan Hopkins got ahead of Efren 10 0. And Efren beat him. Oh, wow. Oh, I, I, I doubt that. I later saw Alan in the hallway, and uh, we both crossed paths, and we both uh, feigned that we didn't see or know each other. <laughs> 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 Simply because there's yeah, nothing yeah, yeah. to say. Nothing he, good to say right now. Yeah. Right, right. It's just like, okay, yeah. yeah. Because I'm sure a hundred other people have already mentioned it to him. Like, I can't believe you lost that. You yeah, know? right, right. How'd that happen? <laughs> right. and, and he, well, you saw it just like I did. Yeah. And he, I, had, he had that straight ahead look like, I don't even want to talk. Don't yeah. even, you know. Well, Alan was a bulldog <laughs> when busy. he played. So Absolutely. And well, it really wasn't, he, it wasn't like he dogged his brains out. No, or no, just things just, happen here and there. And just, then, just like him getting up to nothing. And else. then Efren just played just, you know, like the Efren of his absolute peak. Yeah. It was well, interesting. one banner I always like looking at here is George Sansushi. What a what a great player uh, he was, and uh, I love the guy. And it's amazing. I wonder how many titles he would have had just because of how phenomenal a player. But he won that first BCA Pro Invitational, uh, the inaugural one in '99. Uh, missed that guy. Yeah. Oh, compact stroke. Fierce competitor. Well, he he had it all, in my opinion, as well. He could break the balls unbelievably. Uh, great decisions at all times, it seemed like. Uh, didn't dog it. And there at the break, you could see a little over 21 there for Roberto. And a dry break at a very necessary time, it looks like, for, for John. But, yeah, George, I think, would have. Would have put together a Hall of Fame career, in my opinion. I don't see how he could have been stopped. He always dressed nice. He respected the sport. He was pleasant to be around, cheerful. <laughs> yeah, witty. Powerful uh, stroke. I mean, yeah. Everything. And, you know, there was no dog when it came to the pressure. Uh, oh, no. He was fierce. Yeah. Now, this is a, he's looking underneath this. I don't know if I like underneath on that. I know lefty, he has to pull it back a bit so he's not stretched awkwardly. But you can still use two cushions from a little thinner hit on the three, like right there, right where he was just looking. That's what I like. Underneath, I know it's natural to go around the five, two rails, but you don't get as good on the four, and you need to get decent on the four. I think that's the smart shot there, Mark. Now you can come two rails and get nice and heavy on the four for sure. Yeah, I like the way he's measuring that up because he knows if he's going to play the 6'10", he wants to be in good line to play that 6'10 combo. <clears throat> so he doesn't want to have to be struggling to make the five, which Keep. means you need to get good on the four. Yeah, be aggressive coming off this second rail now. Don't lay up too much. You want to get a good two-foot bounce off the second rail. Well, you got a lot. You got more than two feet. So now he's going to have to work the ball a little bit with the eight looming. Could draw the ball around the nine if he's not comfortable going beyond mm -hmm. the eight. All right, he's going with a high ball. So should get to the end rail here, Mark, right? That's the third rail is the top rail. 
Oh, no, I thought that he would get to the side rail here past the nine, but I might be wrong. Uh, I kind of feel like he's going to go long you're with right. this one. Yeah. yeah, you're right. But he let up the speed just a hair. Yeah. Now a little thin. He's got lefty or righty, though, so good here as far as cutting this five in. Looks like you can go up and down, or do you kill this, Mark? I guess kill it, huh? Yeah, I think because he's got just enough angle here, I think he doesn't have to go up and down. Well, it looks like he is, though, so his line on the cue ball. Speed, of course, important, but maybe the line even more important because he can play a kiss shot on the 10 also. You don't have to play the combo. Oh, that's not going to get there. And when I said kill it, I thought he would throw it in with outside English, catching the second rail and creep up into this position he's at now. I didn't think he would kill it just softly one rail. He he overcut it. I, I did yeah. think he would go one rail, but he overcut the ball so much it, t it left a lot of pace in the cue ball cause it, and changed the angle a little bit. It would have been fine had he hit the heart of the pocket. Right. Now, this isn't easy to get close to the six either. It looks no. like Roberto's going to draw up out of there. Yeah, one rail draw. Should be okay, though, because the 610 is a pretty playable combination. Yeah, the six is that uh, maybe quarter inch off the rail, which makes it I have a huge margin of error. If it's a half inch from the rail, now it really reduces the margin of error. Is he dragging this in? He's certainly not shooting it hard. Right. Yeah, nice shot. And now that three-game lead now again at nine to six. And it's nine games to six now. So immediately following this match, we'll have a key matchup coming up. Filler and Kazakis. And then our early evening match will be Everly and Eminen. And then tonight's matchup to round things out in round one, Peggy Lyon and Al Katie. That uh, is all coming your way here in the Diamond Bigfoot 10 Ball Challenge. Alex Kazakis just walked into the arena. Waiting to, for this match to end to get a little practice in before he takes on one of the greatest players in the world today, Joshua Filler. I really don't know if John's made a ball in the break, uh, Mark. I don't recall it. And I don't he, either for some reason. <laughs> he, he didn't have a shot if he did. Yeah. Uh, still nothing. Oh, four, four ball. Four ball down. Nice shot on the one. A little over 20 miles an hour there. And the two. <laughs> Checked up over the side. He's got a nice chance here. Yeah, the three's near. Some work from the five to the six, but again, you know, when you're breaking them decent, the ball's open nice. This 10 footer really gives you a lot of room to work the cue ball. That's the one benefit. to have to move the cue ball a ton off the two to the three so he wants to get somewhat close to this two ball I would think you know, no reason to gain a big angle there I think they have the Second round, the Banks division finishing up in the next draw will be somewhere around 3 o'clock or so. A lot of pressure on that Banks event, you know, for the guys that are thinking about that all around. Mark, it's really something that sets you up to, yeah. to give you that good chance right. of being the mix. That master of the table is worth quite a bit as Mora fell way short of the mark here on this, and he took a conservative approach to deny falling on the wrong angle, but. Yeah, he wanted one more inch out of the cue ball, I think, uh, to go a little closer to the five. I think he did always want to stay above the five a little bit, 
I think that makes an easier path to get on the six a little than falling behind it, unless you fall behind it perfectly. But now he's going to have to shoot somewhere around where the eight's at with the cue ball. Oof, man. That, mm -hmm. Graze that eight, you're, you're, you're adios in the side pocket with the cue ball there. So that was touchy. It definitely was. Uh, kind of an aggressive to get back in line. Yeah. But... Uh, I thought he would come up short of the eight. I didn't think he'd go all the way to the side cushion. Me too. To I this. thought he'd just roll it in, right? Just to not take a chance in case you miss hit that pocket at all. Well, which way you go here? This is a little funny. I wouldn't say anything's like, you know, just totally natural. You have to put a little tip of English somewhere, whether it's a little inside or outside. Don't think straight ball gets it there. Uh, does that have to go? Oh, beautifully struck. Yeah, that side spin, he put left spin on there, yeah, and that gave him a little acceleration coming off that second cushion. The side spin allowed him to play the shot with less power. Yeah, just use the, the angle he had to bring the cue ball down with just a little bit of English. Cheat the pocket here. Wow, he came all the way over. Don't understand that exactly. And, and not saying it's not good. But is it worth it? I mean, you could have just went to the rail and then drew the ball up the side rail to get on the eight, right? Right. I think he wanted to come around on this eight, two rails, I guess. That's what he was thinking, rather than coming yeah. on the other should side. It's gives you a bigger margin of error. I think it kind of surprised me more than anything <laughs> when, I, when yeah. I saw him shoot the six that firm. Yeah. The seven near. Stunned down to the center of the end rail. A little bit of left English come over to the side rail and then bounce free. And just as we talked about maybe being dry the entire match on the break, and you said, well, if he did make one, he didn't get a shot. Well, he took care of both of those. <laughs> yeah. And it looks like he's going to put his first break and run together. Better late than never. Solid impact there. Oh, nice break and run out. Nine sevens our score. Nice out there for Mr. Smooth. And after 16 racks, again, only two games in between. Roberto Gomez leads at nine to seven, and he's breaking. First game of the rack for Roberto where he didn't get to come to the table. I bet he notices that as well at now at nine to seven. So two, two ball. ball. Yeah, down. He's getting a lot a little better repeatable connection there. The one got bad kiss. Oh, but I don't think the seven lined up now. The good thing is Anytime you're connected to that ball like that, the 170, easy to chip the one, run the cue ball using the 10 and the 6. And the 7 kind of keeps the one in place. So pretty easy safety here. Two rails to about the middle of the end rail. I think that's the play. Is he stopping the ball? What's he doing here? Might be. No. Nope. Oh, oh. Get it way Ooh. too thin. He's going to hope the 4 really helps him out here. 
Oh. And it did. And yeah, that's something you got to fade. You got to try and shake off and make a good hit here if you're John. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be tough. You're going to have to gauge this speed wise and spin wise. Yeah, normally you'd like to come two rails underneath it, but the seven's really cutting off a good portion of the one to hit. So uh, about a third of the ball at least. So you may see him go one rail at this ball. We'll see. Two rails easy to foul. Looks like he's going two to me. Oh, great hit. Look at the speed. Man. Oh, what shot. a clutch shot. That was. You got to have some nerve to play this professional pool, that's for sure, Mark. I love I love the uh, uh, capacity to hit balls like that at that soft speed to give yourself the best chance to have something favorable happen. It's not just uh, blast them in there. I go for this make, cross side, myself. Uh, there is a kick safety there. Don't get me wrong. I mean, there's a good one kicking and just trying to bank the one between the four or five to the end round with a high ball, let the cue ball kind of carry behind the 6'10". But I really think he's supposed to go for this make here. He could cross side it, could do everything, could have a lot of good things happen. He could go after the three. He could play the straight back bank on the one. And if he plays the straight back bank on the one, I think he should play it with enough pace that it can go two cushions and bump the three should he miss on the first rail. I like him making the three myself. Don't have to draw it much, really, to be honest with you. It's just, you got a lot of rail you can use with a little right spin. Yeah. thought it was going to be hard for him to miss the three ball. This needs to slow down a little bit. Could get real funny. I think he's all right. Five to the six looks doable. You think he'll just go ahead and uh, bump the ten? Yeah, I would follow it? my ball. I oh, think. follow it. Yeah, okay. and just and just go ahead and and if I graze the ten a little bit now, if hitting the ten real solid now, that's a different story. I don't follow the ball. I just go into the ten six right here. That's what I thought was a better shot because the the four goes past the five, no that's problem. Like he's drawing this man. Yeah, he was trying to get Ooh, into the ten. And okay, I think he's he okay. Clear. Yeah, made things a little easier for the six. Somewhat. Well, maybe not, actually. Just considering where the five's at, maybe the six is a little more difficult position. Where I'll have to shoot the six from a little thinner point, but that's all right. Good stroke there. Yeah, I was watching. He stayed. He kept that head still long after impact with the cue ball. That's a good sign. Center cut too. Understand that. He had. I thought he just had to take the top inside and get a little thin on the six and come across. I mean, uh, don't understand. Uh, tr was he trying to catch just the thin side of the eight and come one rail off the thin side of the eight towards the six? Maybe that's a doable thing there. That's 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 something that could have happened. 
but very remote from that angle that he was at because he had the yeah. manufacturer bringing the cue ball back into the eight. Yeah, exactly. And the so speed that he used. And was very hard to gauge, right? Not yeah. something you do very often either. Well, look how hard he hit the eight. It came all the way from, you know, mm -hmm. it came, traveled three diamonds. So I don't, I'm not sure what that was about because if you hit the eight thin, the cue ball is way hotter. Yeah. So I don't know. Seemed like to me he would just take the shot on the six from the center of the table, but. Oh, oh wow. man, hit it good, too. Well, from that angle with the slick felt at that speed, you know how hard it is to hit the pocket and hang it? I mean, that's like a one out of, like, 20 that happens, it seems like to me. It that usually even, always slides Yeah, in. it would be very hard from that angle to hang the ball if you hit it inside the pocket. Yeah, that's why a lot of times you'll play the cross corner uh, instead of trying to take on a tough shot, you know, because you know it's hard to hang that bank, crossing it and bringing the cue yeah. ball back down for another uh, position shot down the table. Um, especially when the felt's new. But we've seen a few in this match, so maybe from day one to day two overnight, things changed a little bit. I definitely feel like there was some balls that didn't go in today that would have gone in yesterday. Yeah, a nine ball from... Uh, Roberto. Yeah. And then there was another one, uh, maybe. Which one was it? There was two balls that were kind of jawed that we kind of thought would have gone in yesterday. Now, a lot more side spin on that than there was draw. And pretty good shot, too. Is he looking at three rails short side here? Is I guess. I don't know. Yeah. We yeah. Inside spin. Uh oh, too much high. That top really warped it off that rail. I don't know if we ever could get the replay, but you can see he hit it just a little bit fat, and that cue ball arced into that first rail. Yeah, I thought he kind of overhit it a little bit. That's another reason why it arced a little. I thought mm -hmm. that one you got to creep it around three rails. I know that sounds crazy. You're going some, what is that? You know, three, four, you know, you're going 12 some feet. 12, 13 yeah. feet around the table, so. Yeah, I'm sure he's disappointed from the layout that he got to start with, the hanging ball and the ball down there. And then he really the only trick was getting on the nine. A huge scenario here. Puts him on the heel or cuts it to one game. Now, that's an interesting play. Yeah, he wanted to turn over a little more than, he th than, than it did, you know. Oh, he's going to hate it. If, if Morrow connects on this long nine, <laughs> that means he lost this game without really giving himself a chance to win. You'd much rather go down shooting the bank. Yeah, and I just thought it was uh, – I don't know if he intended on getting there on the eight, but I, I didn't think he hit the seven the way he wanted. Yeah. It really spread on him a lot. Um, I like John's chances here. Really good at the t top English. Oh, he's overcut it. And, you know, I expected John to put a lot more speed on that. He normally would shoot that in and come up one, two, three around the 10. Now difficult. Maybe kick behind this. This is this is tough. Yeah, it's, uh, the kick behind is not that great either because it's too far from the cushion. Yeah, you can still stop your ball. You just got to be committed to putting a hair more speed on it is all. The thing is containing the nine doing so. Right. That's going to catch the 10. He's got to hope the speed is okay, and it's really okay. Ooh, <laughs> man. Now it's a murder for John Moore to deal with. I guess he edges this. Oh, boy. Long range, and then if you hit this thicker, uh, well, you can miss it entirely, or you can hit it too thick. And then there's one way to hit it perfect and about nine ways to mess it up. Boy, what a hit. What a hit that was. Yeah, really nice. Roberto's going to go down shooting, I believe. but Can't blame him on that. No, and you can't blame John's shot. John's no, shot from where he was at was really nice. Absolutely. Just inches away from the cue ball resting on the rail. You can lose instantly with Morris' shot. Here, at least he forces the play and 
Roberto's got to come up with a big shot here. Yeah, Roberto's used his extension already. I mean, if he ducked here, I, I wouldn't blame him if he played safe here. Yeah, most of the guys are going to shoot in that regard, though. In that situation, another tough one. He's missed 110 early. I think it had a big change in this match. I kind of feel like the match would be over if he makes that 10 ball he missed earlier. It would have put him up some four games, but. Oh, good shot. Oh, Cue wow. ball's loose. Very loose. Woo. Wow. <laughs> He's smiling. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that puts himself on the hill now at 10. More seven. So Gomez, the first to reach the hill. It's 10 games to seven now after 17 racks. John Moore will have the break heading into rack 18. John getting the rack put together. And then, you know, and there would be some shots that John would certainly like to have back. Him and Roberto both, that's how matches go. But I think if you ask John right after, he he would tell you, and I would agree that it was really the break that got him slowed down just right from the start of this match and really has never let him really get going either, it seems like. I know it's not a winner break format, but even in alternate break formats, a break really dictates a lot. He's made a ball on the break, so that's two in a row. And the four ball tracked into the side pocket as well. Yeah, and he's covered up on the one and a difficult rollout like always. 20.86 on the break demon. I mean, when the ball's in the middle of the table like this, nothing surrounding it, you're almost always rolling out to an offensive shot um, or at least an option of an offensive shot. So I'm trying to see where to roll out. I mean, maybe the corner here where he's standing nearest. Um, not where he's standing right here, but I was thinking about the other one. Maybe challenge from there. This is okay. But is he going to give the super thin cut on the one in the side? Got to avoid that. Well, you're going to scratch if you go after that. You would think. Uh, I'm just saying if he mishits the, the rollout a little bit, maybe he get, rolls out too far and gives up that shot. Cross corner is definitely happening. <laughs> oh, he's, he's left the one in the corner. Roberto's looking at this like he can shoot this in the corner and not scratch in the side, and if he's done that, I think a little bit of a mistake on the rollout only being it's not saying it's not a tough shot, Mark, but you can't leave automatic position. That's the problem. Uh, he overcut it, so he definitely could have made it without scratching for sure. I don't mind rolling out to the tough shot, but you just yeah. can't leave the uh, you know automatic position as the, as the one you yeah. can't leave. Yeah. Yeah, you always feel just absolutely dumb when you push out and the guy runs out and beats you. Yeah. yeah. Like, that was a terrible push out. Yeah, now if he had to make two or three incredible shots in a row, that's, that's a little different exactly. story. You're still not going to feel great about it, but right. at least you can tip your hat and say great shooting. I don't right. know if this goes. I think he's playing safe. Isn't he bringing the cue ball down by the eight? I'd like to bring it behind the seven myself, but. Oh, that one's going to get away a little bit. He's going behind the 5'10". Maybe a little, asking a little too much, maybe. It's a lot of movement on two yeah, balls there. Yeah. And it's easy for things to, you know, magnify on uh, even a, just a tiny fraction of a bad hit. I think the two ball helped him out a little bit. I think he kept him off the offensive shot. I believe so, anyways. I don't know. 
He was able to shoot it. Yeah, he kind of, he may have even bent that around. It looked the, like it based on the, the speed. Two, yeah, yeah. And the extreme right English, right? And that's what the typical shot I was telling you about with Roberto. Not saying other guys don't have all those shots, but he's really got all those in between stroke mm -hmm. shots. Uh, so sometimes when he lives a match where he's a little out of line, he can still win them. Looks like he's taking on the corner. A little bit past where he wanted. He can still go with a high ball because the six plays from a lot of places. It goes by the nine, so just got to keep it simple here. Well, he's drawing the ball, so he must have a little more angle than I thought, Mark. Otherwise, you might just follow the ball here. Oh, what a powerful stroke. Bent that around three cushions. It's like cue ball back off the rail. Now he's got to deal with the nine yeah. or the ten. He's got to use yeah. the ten a little bit, actually. Just a little light stun, catch about a third of the ten. Should be okay. Is he following through this? This is dangerous. The ten's going to move in the same direction. Okay, he's all right. Good Caught hit. the top of the ten, anyways. That's a, p a case where if you hit the pocket a little bit odd, then it does go. A ride. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. But he got right into the 10, right where he wanted to be, and it followed right on through, came back out. Okay, again, can't express it enough. When the ball's out a little bit, just stay off the rail when you're getting with the 7. Very hard not to have a play to get on the 8. That's going to be real nice. A little thinner than he wanted, but very natural. Somehow that nine ball in your periphery still is annoying, even though it really has nothing to do with the shot, you know. Yeah. All right, looks like he's just going two to the end rail. Pretty smooth transition there. Yeah. He had a pause and the whole. Yeah, he usually does have the pause at the cue ball. And now, you know, I, you know this is a little disappointing to me because I think John's playing pretty well. I hate to lose him in this tournament like this. Uh, I think <laughs> it was really the break that just really set the tone for him. Really never got anything going. And then a few layouts didn't agree with him when he did get a shot. Roberto's laughing. He got, he got straight. Either angle works good. You just got a hint careless on that. This is match ball. Yeah, and Gomez will certainly improve as well as he did in the match. Yeah, nice job there. <laughs> Pretty smooth. Yeah, for both players, you know, uh, right tough match right there. But how much Gomez, yeah, both players uh, struggle? How much do you think Roberto's good attitude has to do with him being able to still play and not oh, get yeah, into the death absolutely. spiral of absolutely. negativity? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, you know, he'll question himself and he'll wonder and keep it in his brain uh, what's going on. But, but definitely him being able to just leave things behind has a huge – that's a huge advantage, especially when you're struggling a little bit. Specifically when he missed that 10 ball and he's breaking and running out after he made just a tremendous run out. And then he's – I looked over and he was smiling and laughing with some guys in the, right behind him like, can yeah. you believe I just did that, you know? Yeah. Where, other guys, you know, they could bite a pencil in half. Yeah, or something, eat one, you know? eat a yeah. pencil in half. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, this has been a terrific edition of Professional Pocket Billiards and a pleasure for us to bring it to you. Thank you. Join us again soon and so long for just a while.